let me start by showing you that in my curator system without doing anything specific to look for uh, look for attempts of exploitation or exploitation or look for J I fired some pickups of, of such an attack and I get all these offenses to fire I'm gonna go into more details on those all the details about what I'll be doing today are in a text file that is on the public box folder whose link is on the video of all my description there is a log4j entry in the and if you go to this site if, over here you find that nice payload that the gentleman who created this post uh, did to reproduce a bunch of not only attempts of exploitation and exploration on on log4j but also they are very nicely obfuscated with base64 encoding with you know upper and lower case uh, tricks that people do uh, to avoid uh, normal detection but because curator explores the payload of every piece of traffic that goes in the network that is monitoring it was able to have all these rules to fire again no single rule was created uh, uh, there, there are rules specifically for Law4j and I may go on to the blog that Josh Morin did. There's also some Jara rules that Chris Minan put out there. There's a blog for JK, all those things. But what I'm showing you here is uh, the, the result of a work of my good friend Leopoldo Aguirre, also known as Polo. And I like it because of the simplicity of the approach. Again, I just replay that pickup that you saw there. I have done videos on how you replay pickups in, in Curator with Q&I. And, and these offenses fire. But these offenses were not looking for anything regarding log4j specifically. For example, this one detected some behavior on the ports and the way that cobalt strike attacks that actually go uh, go about. And, and, and this one, for example, this one is because of IP reputation. This one is because they were going to uh, sites uh, that were that are uh, deemed malicious. So again, none of these things were actually looking for uh, uh, for log for j but that's the beauty of Curera, that it finds all their anomalies. Now, what if we want to look for things that are specific to log for j Well, and that's the power of curators indexing uh, what we called quick filters. So I click here in the new UI quick filter. If I type in here JNDI and I'm looking at flows because again this is as the title implies this is if you have Q&I uh, you can detect log4j happening today or happening a long time ago and when you say long time ago your search needs to be quite efficient otherwise it's gonna consume a lot of resources uh, to find out. So I'm looking here for the last two hours, I replayed the, 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 the pickup. I'll show you where I got the pickup in a second. Uh, I replayed the pickup with that malicious attempt of attack. I'm searching here on flows. And if I click here, run search, notice that very quickly I get all these results. I'm looking for JNDI. And that that's we, we will learn that that's... Uh, uh, that, that is the uh, the Java naming and directory interface and these attacks on log4j have to do with the fact that the input validation on log4j is, is not good and then in some of the HTTP and, uh, and, and some of the TCP IP headers like uh, user agent you may put a JNDNI or RMI command and, and it will be executed uh, uh, for the for the server right so because you should never have on, on, on the field like uh, like a user agent or referrer or authorization JNDI commands or LDAP commands or RMI commands and that's the problem with log4j that, that uh, needs to be patched but in here we're going to see that just by looking into the payload for ENGI you, you saw like in a matter of seconds in fact I'm going to switch to the old UI to because in the old UI it actually shows how many milliseconds it takes for a search because we're going to be doing multiple mechanisms for searching for this and you'll, you'll see the performance of this but you saw it even though this is a demo system you saw how quickly uh, that went through 
Before proceeding, this text file is in the link, which is in the video description of all my videos. There's a public books folder and there is a folder called log4j uh, that has this uh, text file. The PCAP is actually a very good one, was created by the gentleman who uh, created this uh, post. So I uh, downloaded the PCAP, uh, you can go into the instructions and use it uh, as it explains. And I send those to uh, Q&I and I have done videos that show how you replay those. And I got those results. In order to, again, to show the how quick this research, these uh, searches go, I'm gonna switch to the old UI. For example, if we put in here JNDI and perform a search, and we're gonna go back the last, uh, one hour or so, right? You see that in a matter of 68 milliseconds, we get all these entries. And this, this I, by the way, I actually uh, look at the pickup and Wireshark and so all this, but you don't need to do any of that. That, that stuff is actually, uh, that's the beauty of having Q&I. Let's take a look at some of these uh, flows that were retrieved when we just put on the filter gen in the eye. So let's take a look at this one, and, and all these entries are actually uh, show examples of that, of different type of obfuscation. Let's see what do we see in here. So we see, you see, in, even in the get that JNDI, kind of obfuscated by that dollar percent at 7D, uh, we also see it in the user agent, <laughs> in the referrer, in the XAPI version. I mean, all this stuff is, is really obfuscated attempts and, and, and the, the, the destination response to those, right? You see how he's saying, well, I don't find this, I don't find that. So this is exploratory, invoking all those, searching for those objects. Uh, and that's what JNDI does, uh, but it's not supposed to be happening. Let's see some other. So here, got silly message there. This one here, again, authorization, what JNDI has to do with that, right? This this user agent curl is fine, but this piece is actually obviously uh, malicious. That's part of that, uh, of that uh, pickup. But, you know, 68 milliseconds to go the last uh, three hours or so. If I go back, you know, seven days, because that's what you will need to do in your environment. Notice only 88 milliseconds. This is beautiful. Because in your production environment, you're going to get this type of response. That's why I like what Polo is highlighting here, which is the how efficient those uh, index uh, that you get with quick search uh, are. But let's do, let's do more uh, sophisticated one. Let's say that we, of course, uh, quick filters are case independent. If you put that one in uppercase, it will be the same thing. If you're looking for... I want to see example of JNDI with the usage of, or, or with also the usage of LDAP. If I were to paste that in here, notice that the AND is in uppercase. Boom, 19 milliseconds and getting all that uh, all that information. Notice from the, the 10 to the 17. So that's, that's a beautiful performance. That's what you want to start with to see whether there are indications of uh, of JNDI. Uh, Let's look some other filters in here. Uh, well, this one is actually a notation. We, we, we can put it in there as well. It's a notation for quick filter that basically indicates I want JNDI and LDAP and any character that can be in the middle. It can be equal, it can be colon, semicolon, whatever. And it's going to find the same entries we had before because there was a space. Let's do some of the things that Polo put in here. Well, you can make the searches more complex, like this one, JNDI, and either LDAP or DNS, because we, we see that these attacks also uh, have in the, in the DNS referrer that JNDI thing. Uh, and we, we see a bunch of entries here. Let's click on anyone randomly and see if we get to see the, the DNS. But... Uh, Uh, so this one is just on the LDAP, that's what that's fed with the O. Let me find another one that has the DNS part. Perhaps the easiest way is actually to 
get rid of this or here and put the conditions of only these two hit enter go back all those days 30 13 milliseconds only and if we click in here we will find that jndi on the dns right you see on the referrer you see so again performance is, is really key and i would i would say that i will go that as the first approach of looking for presence of jndi uh, of this attack actually look for j in your environment in a very fast way with just having q and i in your environment but um, even more things that you can do with those quick filters let me actually take the one here to make the video sure i'm not gonna play with other ones so this one is going to find jndi and any one of these protocols ldap or LD, ldap s or rmi dns nist iop corva nds these are all possible examples of exploitations of that sort so i paste that in here and i hit enter in 30 milliseconds only going all back all those days and i find examples of that and that's what i, I, I in the next videos i'm going to continue uh, down the path of more sophisticated ways of searching uh, for this and even we go to this uh, uh, regex that Ad, uh, adam frame created uh, but i just want to highlight the point and, and forgive me for not using the new UI and using the traditional, but I wanted this this field that uh, shows how efficient it is. Because again, you want to go in a production environment, you want the search to be quick, you don't want to impact your resources, and, and that's the beauty of QRead. And that actually is a great example of the value of indexing and how you can go about and see where there are attempts of exploitation of uh, Log4j in your QRead environment. More on the next videos.